Hello and welcome to the Magura Tech video series. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the assembly and filling and bleeding of a HC3 clutch and brake master cylinder, in this case with the BMW R9T motorcycle. As you can see, we've already stripped the motorcycle back. We've changed the brake and clutch line uh, in preparation for the job that we're going to be doing today. And uh, we're going to start off by putting the clutch master cylinder on and filling and bleeding the clutch. If anybody's wondering uh, why we changed the, the clutch line on the R90, um, as you can see, the fitting at the top of the clutch line, um, the standard fitting on the motorcycle is not suitable for use with uh, a radial master cylinder. So effectively we've changed uh, lengthwise like for like, except the fitting at the top is different. The uh, standard HC3 comes with a normal clamp, which is generally what's used for racing motorcycles um, or fared motorcycles where the, the mirror, the rear view mirror is on the fairing. Uh, we require in this case a mirror mount clamp for this particular motorcycle. What you'll also see if you have a look here is that the clamp on the HC3 is clamped tight on the top and is then tightened into position on the bottom. That's important to know whenever you're tightening it into place. Um, the clamp retaining bolts on the HC3 are both titanium bolts. Um, we've also had a couple of questions over the years about uh, how the reservoir is mounted on the HC3. The easiest way to explain it to you is simply to mount, first of all, mount the little tube and the, and the reservoir itself, and then it becomes very clear how the bracket, the retaining bracket for the reservoir is mounted onto the master cylinder. So I mount the HC3 on roughly into position. It doesn't have to be exactly in position, but roughly into position where I want it. Any fine adjustments that I'm going to be, ma going to be making, I will do at the very end. I just want it in situ. I would like to have the reservoir roughly level because it makes it slightly easier when I'm filling and bleeding. And then I connect the new clutch line with my two new gasket washers. One gasket washer below, one above the fitting. I tighten that into position. And then I'll torque that into place before I start the filling and bleeding process. In order to tighten the banjo bolt into position, I clamp the master cylinder so that it can't move on the handlebar while I'm doing it. Then in this case, I tighten it into position 15 Newton meters. And then, to prepare for the filling and bleeding process, I remove the lid and the bellows from the top of the reservoir. And then I'm ready to go injecting fluid in at the slave cylinder. In order to start the filling and bleeding process, I'm going to put some oil into the reservoir at the top not a whole pile just a little bit to start off with and then I've attached a syringe I've attached a syringe and the 
eight mil spanner at the back. So I'm going to open the bleed valve at the back. And then as I inject fluid into the system, then I should see air bubbles rising. The fluid level should start to rise as the air is expelled. And now where the level is full at the top, I close the bleed valve at the bottom. And I should have in this position, not a proper pressure point, but the start of a pressure point. Yes. So the clutch is starting to actuate, but is not fully actuating. If I operate here, I will expect to, to have some air traveling up and uh, I'm now going to bleed the master cylinder at the top. So we're back and we're going to bleed the, the master cylinder. In order to bleed the master cylinder, I first of all put uh, a silicone hose onto the nipple followed by an 8 millimeter ring spanner and a syringe. If I open the bleed nibble, uh, I want to suck the air out of the system and in order to do that, I simply lift the piston on the syringe so that I've created a vacuum within the syringe and then as soon as I open, I get the air rising into the syringe. I pull on the piston until the air is a bit less and at some stage I then operate the lever and retighten the bleed valve and I expect and I immediately have a much much better pressure point on the clutch. I can adjust the hand lever outwards um, always with the bleeding position on a master cylinder is always with the lever fully extended because I have the largest piston travel in that position. Um, I'm going to do the same again, simply create a vacuum within the syringe. Again, there's some more air there. Operate the lever and close the nipple. And I would declare that as as an air free bled clutch in order to remove the syringe it's always a good idea to create a vacuum within the, the syringe take the hose off and then the fluid should travel back up into the syringe rather than spraying the motorcycle now i can also adjust on the hc3 the position of the ratio adjustment which is what I'm going to show you now in one moment. And to finish off our build on the clutch side, um, I fill the reservoir with oil. I then insert the bellows and screw the lid on. Uh, a hydraulic clutch, as it wears, will fill the reservoir rather than empty it. It's completely the other way around from the brake. So I don't want to overfill the reservoir. I filled it just below the max level. In terms of then connecting the uh, clutch switch to the BMW wiring loom. It's always a good idea with BMW motorcycles not to cut into the wiring loom um, because they operate with a CAN bus system. What I will generally do in this case is I will get a clutch switch from the BMW dealer, cut into the back of the clutch switch, 
solder the wires from the Magura clutch switch into the back of the BMW switch and I then have a plug and play connector to the BMW wiring loom. Uh, I then adjust the master cylinder and put the motorcycle back together again, put the, the mirror on um, and then when I ride I can adjust the lever ratio adjustment which is something that I'd show you on the brake side. It's something very easy to do. So the next thing that we're going to do is put the brake master cylinder on. Hello, uh, now we're going to put the brake master cylinder onto the R90. Um, the first thing that's very important to establish before you go and order a HC3 or any other master cylinder is what master cylinder was on the bike originally. So in this case, there was a 15 millimeter axial master cylinder, and we are now putting a, an 18 millimeter radial master cylinder on this bike. The reason for that is if I'm changing from axial to radial, I should always go one piston diameter um, above. And in this case, uh, the customer wants a very hard pressure point um, a short lever which we'll put on afterwards for him and um, we will use the 18 millimeter HC3 in the 17 millimeter position and the customer should get exactly what he's looking for. Um, in the case of the R9T I need a mirror clamp rather than the standard clamp so that's an optional extra which I've had to order separately. Um, you will also see on the clamp on the HC3, I'm, I'm, I'm clamped tight against one side of the master cylinder here at the top and I have a gap at the bottom and the gap is the, the clamp so I tighten it completely uh, tight against the top clamp and then I clamp it at the bottom. So I remove the clamp. The clamp retaining bolts on the HC3 are titanium bolts. And then I put the master cylinder onto the motorcycle. Just roughly where I want it. I put the mirror clamp on as well. And I install the top bolt. And tighten it into position. I'm in a position afterwards to make any fine adjustments that I require. So I just want to put it into roughly the position that I would like to have it afterwards. And then I'll attach our new brake line. Now there's a new brake line in this case because the old brake line was for an axial master cylinder which means that the ring piece was about four centimeters away from where it needs to be and was also turned at a 90 degree angle to what I require for a radial master cylinder and then when I have my banjo in position I then tighten it 15 newton meters in this case and then I'm ready to fill and bleed the system. To fill and bleed the system I begin by putting some brake fluid into the reservoir. I just want to fill it to around the min level. And as you can see, I've set up a syringe with no air in the hose 
onto the bleed nibble on the brake caliper. Now before I open the bleed nibble, I've changed the, the brake hose from the ABS unit up to the master cylinder. So I have brake fluid in the caliper, in the lanes, in the ABS unit, and I now have to push the fluid up the last piece of the brake line and up into the master cylinder. As I do that, the bubbles are going to rise first as the air is expelled, and then I will expect the level to rise. Um, when I open the nipple here on the, the brake, I'm going to create a little vacuum just by pulling the, the piston so that when I open it, that bubble of air that's here is now rising into the syringe rather than being pumped into the braking system. So I just have to wait for that bubble to rise up into the top of the syringe. Sometimes a little tap will help. You can see that I have a bubble here. I want that up into the syringe rather than injecting it down into the caliper. There we go. It just lost. Then I'm going to inject the brake fluid. You can already see the bubbles starting to rise. And when the line here is fully air free, then the level in the reservoir will begin to rise. I don't want to exert too much pressure here simply because if I do, I may create a bit of extra pressure, lose a drop or two here. That's not a problem, but I have to get rid of this fluid very quickly because brake fluid is paint stripper. If I exert too much pressure with the syringe, it's possible that one of my connections here will will um, release and spray the bike with brake fluid, which is always a bad idea. If that happens, just use copious amounts of water. Brake fluid is hydroscopic, and as a result, it attracts water. Now you can see the level in the reservoir is starting to rise. Still an odd bubble with it. Okay. I'm now going to close the bleed valve. I'm going to, before I take the hose off, I'm going to create a vacuum again with the syringe by pulling on the piston so that when I take it off, that the fluid goes into the syringe rather than spraying the motorcycle again. I then take some paper and some brake pack cleaner. And I clean any brake fluid off so that none of it remains on the motorcycle. So I've managed to do that without covering the bike, thankfully, in brake fluid. And then I'm going to bleed the master cylinder. So to bleed the master cylinder, as you can see, um, again, I put a little piece of uh, hose onto the bleed nipple on the master cylinder. Every radial master cylinder has uh, an extra bleed nipple because it has a small area right at the top here, close to the clamp, where uh, a volume of air can gather. I then put the syringe onto the hose again lift the piston on the syringe to create a vacuum, open the bleed nipple. As you can see, I have some air rising. I then operate the lever and close the nipple. I 
and then create a vacuum again to remove the hose so that the fluid doesn't squirt away and check the pressure point on the brake which is starting to get very close to where I want it. Now you can see as I'm operating there's still one or two little air bubbles every now and again rising into the, the reservoir which means that I'm not fully bled, I'm very close to it. So I'll do the procedure again here. Put the hose back on, lift the piston, open the valve, suck some air out of the system, operate the lever, close the valve. Then I create a vacuum again in the syringe, lift the syringe off, and then check the pressure point. Now at this stage, I think I still have some air in the system. So in this case, I'm going to have to push more fluid from the, the caliper back up into the system. Again, being extremely careful not to introduce any air down here. Um, I'll do that and then we'll come back and check it again. Okay, we've repeated the, the bleeding process. Um, we now have a good pressure point. And I'm going to fill the reservoir with fluid. I'm going to insert the bellows and the cap. And the cap, the dust cap for the bleed nipple. And what I'd like to show you is the three-way lever adjustment on the HC3. Um, if this is not your perfect pressure point, then it's very simple. I have an eight mil spanner for the lock nut on the bottom. And I remove the lever mounting bolt. Now there are three fixed positions here, and in all three positions, this master cylinder remains fully 90 degree radial in terms of the operation. So I can pull the bolt out and I can reposition it either one millimeter above or one millimeter below. What I need to be careful of when I replace this is not to over tighten it. <coughs> it's not there to be tightened. And I can immediately see if I over tighten it, then the return rate will slow. And I have the self locking nut below tighten into position. In this position I have more lever travel 
um, and I require less force to operate the brake. If I set it into the middle position, I have less lever travel and require more force in order to operate the brake. And in the top position, I have require more force again and have less lever travel. Um, it's a very simple operation. After the initial test raid with the HC3, it always makes sense to uh, re-bleed the master here at the top over the bleed nipple because it is possible that there's still a small little amount of air somewhere and that'll make its way into this, uh, either into the reservoir, but also into this uh, zone here at the top of the, the radial master cylinder. So I hope you enjoy the, the HC3. Um, there's only one last thing that I'm going to show you. We're going to replace the, the long lever with the short lever um, and, uh, and install the mirror. To fit the short folding lever, which as you can see, is really for two finger brake operation. Um, it's very simple. I screw the lock nut off the back of the folding lever. I then remove the retaining bolt. Now I need to be careful in doing so because there is a, a detent located in here which is a small spring and a ball and the ball simply locates the lever in the straight position. So I take the screw out and I need to be careful that the spring and the ball don't disappear on me. So the spring is still in there and the ball is now on the end of the lever. If I take the new lever, you can see, hopefully, the indent for the ball. The ball is greased in order to stay in the indent. There's enough grease on this particular ball for me not to have to re-grease it. I take the lever, very careful not to lose the ball, put the ball into the hole. Mount the lock washer at the back. I screw the screw in first to the position that I wanted. I don't need to screw it very tight. Simply screw it into that position and then lock it with the lock nut at the back. Now I want the lever ideally so that it does not fold easily. In other words, I can set it here with the tension so that it requires a little bit of force to lift it. Not a lot, but a little bit. In this position, when I ride the motorcycle, it's not going to, to bounce around and make any noise um, and annoy the rider. Um, but if the motorcycle should fall over at any stage, it can easily fold away. That's the position that I would set the, the folding lever into. As you can see, I now have a two finger brake. So now we have our HC3 brake and clutch master cylinder mounted on the motorcycle, filled, bled. Um, now we have to put the motorcycle back together again. Um, try our first test ride, always a good idea. Set the lever a little further out than you would normally use it for the first test ride and then afterwards potentially to bleed 
both master cylinders again following the first test thread and then to set the lever position to your favoured to your favoured position. Um, I hope that the, the video has um, given you a bit of an insight into the world of HC3 master cylinders or Magura master cylinders. Should you have any questions at all relating to any of this, um, feel free to address them to powersports at magura.com and thank you very much for watching.